All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Sorry about the shakiness of the camera, just adjusting stuff. And let me do a quick refresher to make sure it is pulling up online for you guys. But I hope everybody's having a good Monday morning. Um, I did hear that Zoom is actually quite full on Mondays because so many people are doing their weekly meetings, um, those that can work at home. So hopefully that doesn't mess up uh, the amount of congestion on the internet as we paint today. Um, but yeah, we're painting a coffee cup today, as you can see on the screen. And at the end of this live video, I will upload the traceable to my website, and there is a link in the description box below. And for my first time painters, you can download, purchase and download that traceable. Um, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer it to your canvas and then you can pick up the video again when the painting starts. So it's a nice way to kind of get that initial image on there before you start painting. If you want to bypass that, um, I recommend just pausing the video, drawing what you see on your canvas, and then picking the video back up um, for the painting portion. So whichever works for you, you've got options. And I'm not sure if I stated this at the beginning, this is Paint with Lovejoy, our daily live demo at 11 a.m. And this is a viewer request for the coffee cup today. So for today's painting, I've got actually what I call a limited color palette. Um, we just have a couple of colors on here and we are sticking with the primary colors today, uh, red, yellow, and blue. And we'll be using some white and some black to make some tints. Um, and that's how we can kind of tone it down. Um, I actually like using a lot of bright colors in my artwork, but we are going to tone down and mute some of these colors in the painting today. I'm also going to be painting rather thick. I'm not going to use a whole lot of water. And I want you to try to, maybe if you're painting, try painting really thick so that way you can get a feel for working with just thicker paint. Um, and we'll be slapping some colors in there. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> and I'm on an 8x10 canvas, so I am using a bit of a smaller brush. But I'm going to be filling in. I want a red background um, <clears throat> for my coffee cup. I think it's going to be a blue coffee cup and then a yellow table. But that's where we're going to mute the yellow. We're going to add a touch of black to it so it's not a bright yellow table. All right. <clears throat> there we go. Should have actually had my coffee. Um, I had it way earlier this morning, and if I have two cups of coffee, um, it is not... A good thing for me so I've already had my coffee but if you're painting along having your cup of coffee cheers hope you're enjoying it and again I'm just kind of basically filling in the background minus the table with just straight red paint and then we're gonna slap some color on top of it and play with that wet on wet blending and if you're using student grade paint at home like I am uh, do apply your paint a little thicker. I'm already applying it kind of thick, but I want there to be enough texture that when you slap on that new color, you can move it around a little bit. And if you apply your paint really thin, you're not going to be able to do this as much. It will dry a lot quicker. All right. Awesome. Just checking comments. Good morning, Janet. Hi, Sonia. Thanks so much for joining this morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, those of you that are painting at home, if you have a stretched canvas, I do want you to carry this color over the tops and the sides and the bottom of the canvas. That way it looks nice when you hang it on your wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And if you're in the beginning stages of painting and you realize you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale, relax, breathe. It's just Monday. It's just painting. The world is still continuing to move about and do its thing. All right, so I do have um, my blue or my red paint on here fully covered. Oh, I forgot where the handle is. So don't forget this little part too, if you forgot on yours. And we're gonna be slapping some colors on top of this. So just for kind of fun, I do want a bit of a shadow area down here, and then I do want it to be a little bit lighter up top. So I'm going to show you two things. For the shadow area down here, I'm actually going to grab just a spot of that blue. Don't even have, it doesn't matter how much. And you're just going to kind of slap it on there. And then we are going to wipe that brush off. And then with light pressure, I want you to blend this blue into 
the red and it is going to become a really dark kind of muddled color. So if it starts getting too much for you, you can take a paper towel, wipe it off, or grab some of your red again and a big blob of it. I'll actually have to refill that. Slap it on top of there and then again just move it back and forth. Again, just playing with the observation of what it looks like when you add blue on top of red, when you add more red on top of it. Um, just kind of play with it. Take it slow. I'm using light pressure with my brush. I am actually going to pick up some of that dark color and we're going to put just a little bit here on the edge of the table and on the inside of the cup just a little bit. And if you are one of my first time painters, take another deep breath for me, relax. Um, if you paint something today and you don't like it, you can either wipe it off with a paper towel and reapply, or you can let the paint dry and just apply a new color on top of it. So acrylic paint has a lot of uh, variety and versatility that you can use with it. And again, I'm just using light pressure, plain. If you want to finger paint and kind of smear this around, go right ahead and give that a try. But as you can see, I do kind of have a dark shadow here close to the table, and then it's a little bit more heavier handed, a little darker on that left hand side of the canvas. Nice, nice. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I think that says Natasha and Kior. Hopefully I pronounced those right. If I did not, I am so sorry. Um, pronouncing names correctly is not one of my special strong skills as a teacher. And I've actually had people call me by various names too, so feel free to <laughs> uh, make a new combo of mine or anything. All right, so now before we move on to the other section, we're gonna start putting some yellow up here, but I am gonna kind of I cleaned my brush off just to get some of that extra paint off and grabbed a big chunk of that yellow. Same thing that we did with the blue. We're just going to slap it on here and then move your brush on top of it. And you are going to notice how your yellow and red blend together. And you may notice that that red um, eats up the yellow really, really quickly. So if you end up moving your brush too much and you lose that spot, just grab some more yellow, reapply and maybe don't move your brush as much. Again, you're just kind of taking in a lot of information right now as you paint. Your brain's understanding how colors are mixing and what it looks like. If you want to try a little bit of white, give that a go, but keep in mind that a little bit of white is gonna turn your red pink. So if you don't want pink on there, um, skip using the white. But you can use yellow to get kind of a nice soft color in there. And then if there is an area that you're like, ah, oh, maybe I need a little more red, go back and grab more red. You can go back and forth with this method as much as you like getting the background in a position that you like it. So before you move on to the next sections with me, get your background to where you like. You can pause the video and then pick it back up. Um, we're going to move into the table next and then we're going to move into our coffee cup. All right, so I am cleaning the brush really good because we are going to be moving into yellow paint for the table and we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to have, to have our yellow table here. We're going to have a use a tiny amount of the blue to make a bit of a blue green shadow. And then we are going to have a little bit of a shadow happening on this side of the cup and we're going to put a little bit of red in there. So as we go through this painting, um, like I said earlier at the beginning, we are using a limited color palette. And I wanted to show you that you can introduce your other primary colors into another primary color. So you can put your blue and your yellow into your red and create a painting. So you don't have to have tons and tons of supplies or every single color in the world. You can do a lot with really simple colors. You can actually even do a lot with just black and white. Um, and I think one of the paintings next week, I'll make sure um, I'm using only black and white or maybe a monochromatic painting where we're just using maybe just blue, black, and white. All right, so this again, applying it kind of thick so we can slap that color in there and work um, with light pressure on the brush. And by using a limited color palette, it brings a very harmonious composition um, when the viewer is looking at it. 
So by having this yellow table, and then there's a little hint of the yellow in the uh, red background, helps tie everything together. And then when we get into the blue cup, um, we might use a little bit of red to create a bit of a purple shadow. So having hints of color from other areas in your composition or in your painting bring unity to your composition. So even though this is a free demo, I'm trying to help you guys walk away with some extra information, even if it is very artsy. <laughs> You'll be amazed where some of this stuff shows up in your own creativity. So your brain's locking away that information. All right, so we've got our yellow table on there. And if you are painting at home, be very careful if you're moving into one section to the next. You do want to be cautious as that yellow edge of the table is coming up next to your red paint. And if you want to, let your red paint dry and then move into this area. And then same thing, we'll let your table dry before you move into your coffee cup. So with this one, because it is a lighter color compared to our darker color of the background, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of pigment is going to go a long way. So I'm actually going to grab a touch of this red just on the edge of the brush. And at the base of the cup, I'm going to kind of hug the bottom of the cup, grab a little bit more of that red, and the corner. And I'm putting kind of the highest concentration of pigment closest to the cup, then wipe the brush off, so wipe off any excess pigment, and then I'm going to do these little hash marks back and forth, kind of carrying this pigment out towards the right-hand side of the canvas. So again, keeping with that light pressure, and I'm just making little back and forth X marks. Don't think about it too much. And we're just kind of pulling this pigment through the yellow paint and towards the right hand side of the canvas. And again, you're gonna notice how the yellow paint starts to change color. Maybe it starts getting a little bit more diffused in color as you get closer towards that right hand side of the canvas. But a lot of art is ob observing. So you're observing a lot of things right now. And your muscles are getting comfortable with the pressure of your brush. So again, just be kind to yourself as you are in, at whatever stage you're at for your painting. So I'm actually adding a bit more red. I want that to go a little bit darker. And gonna do the same thing, just kind of pull that out. Maybe a few areas of my shadow are a little bit darker then the rest of it as it diffuses. Excellent, excellent. Now I'm gonna take a touch of that blue. It is gonna create green, um, so I'm not gonna actually move my brush too much and putting it on the left-hand side, swiping it on there, wipe that brush off, and then same thing. And we haven't done the blue cup yet, but this would kind of be a bit of the blue of the cup reflecting onto the table. Same with kind of the shadow, having a bit, some of the red in there um, reflects the background color. So as you start painting more and more, you will realize that colors around each other reflect and interpret and affect each other. That's why there is no truly right or wrong way to paint. There's just learning to look at things from a new perspective and learning to just appreciate your world a little bit more. All right, so I'm actually gonna go back to the shadow on the coffee mug. Just on that far right corner, I'm putting some blue because I want that to be even darker. And then same thing, back and forth, mixing it into the red. It does create a bit of a purple shade. I'm carrying a little bit of that purple shade all the way through the bottom of the cup. And this is just giving one more darker, intense shadow. All right. So now we're actually, oh, I'm actually going to clean up this edge. So I'm going to go back to the yellow and clean up this edge of the table. Some of my red shining through. So I'm applying my yellow a little bit thicker. Now I'm going to clean the brush and we're going to kind of do the same concept. So we're trying to just build on the skills. We're going to put in a blue cup here. We will have our dark black coffee in there. And that will take us to the conclusion of the video. And those of you that are painting at home, please send me a picture of what you paint. Email that to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. 
or tag me in social media outlets um, at or hashtag paint with lovejoy. Um, really, really enjoy seeing all the photos. I'm starting to get quite a few every morning now. And while I'm having my coffee in the morning, I'm scrolling through photos, replying to pictures, and it just, it puts a smile on my face. So please share your progress and share your work with me. Um, I think it was brought up yesterday. I do have a Facebook group. Um, I'll double check and make sure the link is in the description box below, but it's Paint with Lovejoy on Facebook. Um, and you are welcome to upload photos there and comment on others' work and, you know, just a nice platform to be supportive for each other. And as you are at home more and more these days, jump on over and check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And I'm constantly, um, I'm in the middle of editing, oh my gosh, four or five courses. So I've got new things coming out. Uh, definitely will be producing more in the next couple of years. So keep checking over there for more videos. Um, my Paint Your Pet class is on there, super, super popular. My intro to palette knife scraping is on there. I'm working on a grid method to where you can basically paint or draw any photograph. Um, I'm in the editing stages of that. Um, I am going to be doing some doodle videos because I've had a lot of requests for people on how to draw and doodles and step-by-step -step drawing books were how I learned as a kid. So I'm going to recreate some of those for you guys. But feel free if you've got ideas or you want something specific for me to paint, like send me an email or leave a comment on one of my videos. Um, your guys' input really has shaped where this has gone. So I appreciate the support and feedback. Okay, so for this one, because I don't necessarily want green in, um, for the highlight, so I wouldn't be using yellow. I'm going to be using white for the highlight here. And grabbing a big chunk of white, we're going to put it on that right hand, left hand side. I am dyslexic, sorry. We're going to put a little bit on the top of the cup. And then on the handle, the top part of the handle, and then the edge. All right, I am gonna wipe off that excess white paint. And if I do have any excess blue paint in there, wiping that off. And again, just like the yellow and the red, you're gonna see how quickly this white kind of gets eaten up with the blue. So light pressure and just kind of play with your mark making and the phasing out of the color. And if you need to, if you feel like you're getting a lot of paint on there, wipe it back off and then you can go back and do some softening